All right, at the end of the last video, I was just starting to set up for my refined storyboard. But when I expanded my canvas size around my frames, I saw that they weren't already cut to a square. And I want them to be cut to a square. So I'm going to move back in my history to before I change the canvas size. And the only thing I'm going to do, do different is I'm going to use the crop tool and just hit return so that I'm certain there's nothing outside of this within my layers. Right. Now I've, I've moved a guide to each side. I can check my image size just to make sure it should be eight inches by eight inches by 100 pixels per inch. That means 800 by 800 pixels. Now I'm going to grow my canvas size. So I go to image canvas size this is the paper behind and i'm going to make it 30 inches by 40 inches make sure it's inches not pixels and it's going to grow from the center make sure relative is unchecked then hit ok and i still get these these strange things on the sides that i should have cropped off but we'll make it work That's so bizarre. I'm not sure what those are from. I thought cropping would take care of it. Okay, now what I need to do is make the table white. This is like dealing cards from a flip book onto a table. So I'm going to go to my background layer. I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to fill it, edit fill, with white. So right now it's like my stack of cards, my flip book of my animation is all stacked in the middle of the table. It has like a gingham gray tablecloth on it. I want to put a nice white tablecloth on it so that that gray doesn't distract and I can see the shape of it. Now I need to turn on my grid. So under show, you have guides and we've been doing that with command semicolon to turn the guides on and off. Also under view show, you have a grid and you turn that off, turn that on and off with um, command apostrophe. We don't have the option to show our ruler in inches. So what we're going to do is count the number of these squares. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five out on each side and then move a guide to there. So start where your original guide is around your image and then go one, two, three, four, five. Because these are point sizes instead of inches. So we want five points. One, two, three, four, five. And the important thing is to get an even spacing all the way around. One, two, three, four, five. You can make it bigger. You can make it narrower. Though I think this is about as narrow as that I would, I would want you to make it. But it needs to be the same on all four sides. One, two, three, four, five. Now I can turn off my grid under show and uncheck the grid. And you'll see my original guides here around my image. And then you'll see the outside guides there, which if you hit command zero, will show you where you nest. I gotta get off the crop tool here. Where you will nest all of your different frames. So to make my refined storyboard, I now have to pick the nine images from my 52 frames that tell the story the best. And I can use my storyboard sketch as a guide, even if I have to diverge from it a little bit. So what do I want to start with? I want to start with the last frame. I know that this cat is my last frame. So I'm going to move that, and it will stick with that corner 
to the guides. You see when they kind of glow red? That means it's stuck in. The next frame, maybe I don't want this one. Maybe I don't want that one. Come on. Maybe I want this one. And then move that. I have auto select turned off. And then I let it snap in where I see red on both sides. Then next, not that, not that. Well, maybe, no, not that's too much. Maybe this one though, I think that one's good. And then I'm gonna use the inside one. So we're getting exact spacing in between. I think that's maybe a good one. I'm skipping a bunch of frames there. Now the middle, that's when he's starting to burst into flames. So I get to choose which one is best. And it's probably this one. And that stays in the middle. Now it's a little trickier because I need to mark which one is in the middle with a color. And I'll usually use orange because I have to turn that off for the time being in order to see what's underneath it. And it needs to be right when he starts to steam or smoke. And there he is. And I leave that middle one turned off, though it will get turned on at the end. And then I want my first three frames. So when he first starts turning red, So maybe right there. And then maybe right there. And then here. Or maybe not. Maybe we'll just go right to the first. Layer one. There we go. This is from my stage. Okay, now I need to turn on that middle one. And then I can hit command semicolon to turn off my guides and I have a very clean storyboard. And if I wanted to print this, look at the image size, image, image size. It's 30 by 40 inches at 100 pixels per inch. We're not printing at 30 by 40 inches. What we want it to be is at least eight by 10 by at least 300. So if I uncheck resample, which means the pixels will stay exactly the same, and I put in eight inches, that's gonna be eight by 10.67 at 375 pixels per inch. And that's perfect. So 30 by 40 at 100 is the resolution we need. Okay, now I have to save that. So I'm going to say File, Save. This is my refined storyboard. And then I need to save it as, or export it as, a JPEG to put to Canvas. Okay. And that, that's going to go to my downloads. So that's the last thing I need to turn into Canvas. And now we can do our presentation critique. So I add it to my animation underneath. This will be my refined storyboard. We do so much. Now, why are we going over layout? It's because we need to use those kind of skills in order to make our work print ready before the midterm critique. You're going to print your logo, that's our next project, and then you're going to print two other projects from the first half of class. It could be your animation refined storyboard, or it could also be your landscape, or it could be your creature scape, it could be your creature, it could be your exercises. And I'm going to put the dimensions here just to remind you. 30 inches, you always do horizontal first by 40 inches at, always good to know this, 
350 or sorry at 100 pixels per inch ppi okay you post it and then you are going to have to shrink this because 30 by 40 is quite large and then we'll go over and what i'm going to ask of you in the presentation critique is at what point is your transformation the most dynamic? Like, where do you see it be noticeable the most? Absolutely. Well, let's start with Olivia. Uh, 